Dr. Suman Rawal. I am going to present geological investigation and its use for the civil engineers. First, we will try to understand what are the geological investigation. Geolo for the construction of any large structures like dam, tunnel, airport, and road, even for the building, we need proper geological investigation. So, engineers should have the fullest knowledge of the understrata. Without proper investigation, project not only involves the considerable high cost, but their stability also might be in question. The main objective of the geological investigations are first is the lithology of the area. As you understand, lithology means study of rock, what type of rocks are present in the area. Second is the geological structures of the area. Geological structures like what are the status of fold, faults and joints in the area. Third is the condition of groundwater. Of groundwater, whether the what are the ground what type of groundwater table is present there, whether it is above the ground or it is under the ground. I mean to say the what are the groundwater condition over there. And third and the very significant thing is that the seismicity of the area, seismicity of the area means what are the condition of the seismicity there or the earthquake over there, whether the area is experience any large structure in near future or not, if any seismicity is there, what is the magnitude of this seismicity. Geological investigation are of two types. First is surface investigation. And second is subsurface investigation. Now we will talk about first surface investigation. Surface investigation. It includes first the preparation of geological map as uh, we drawn in the uh, practical session that is the cross section of the area with the help of the already map prepared by the geological survey of India and the survey of the India. This will give the idea about what is the elevation of the area, what elevation, what is the topography of the area. Second is the aerial survey. Now, nowadays this aerial survey, survey has gained so much of significance because this is very easy and it takes very less time compared to the conventional means the geological map methods. It includes the satellite imageries. and aerial photographs. Satellite imageries are of very significant. These are clicked by the many satellite waves which are working continuously in our atmosphere. This gives if the satellite imageries correctly, correctly interpreted, this gives a very important information about the ground data even that can give us the indication about the subsurface structures also. Now we will discuss about the hydrological survey, hydrological survey or the groundwater condition. In this we discuss about the drainage pattern what is the drainage pattern of the area? Location of spring in the area of spring or what we can say that is the waterfall in the area. Location of well. In 
another important what is the precipitation and evaporation of the area after the surface investigation subsurface investigation is also important because it gives the details what is under the subsurface or which is not exposed to us this subsurface investigation subsurface investigation it is also having two method first is direct method and second is indirect method first direct method includes trial trench trial bits and core logs which is all sometime also known as bore hole data in the indirect method the main two methods are the electric conductivity method and seismic methods electric conductivity method is mainly useful for the rocks or for the metal which are the good conductor or are the bad conductor of the electricity and seismic reflection methods is used for the where our rocks or our structure or our ore body have the very high depth this method seismic reflection method is mainly used in the oil exploration while this conductivity method can be used to understand the subsurface structure structures and also for the determination of the ore body which are the good conductor of the electricity or to locate the ground water table in the subsurface condition now the most important direct method is the bore hole data or the core log now i am going to discuss about the bore hole data a bore holes into the surface of the earth is drilled up to the required depth means we will predetermine the depth using the suitable techniques soil and rock samples are obtained from the ground floor as the drilling progress the observed samples are summarized in the form of a chart which is commonly known as the core log when a core log from a few locations from the same area is studied collected and interpreted it properly very important structures features of the lie of the rock like dip and strike repetition or the omission of the strata and thickness of the each layer can be calculate very easily if we will drill inside the earth we may get one such type of core logs deter we have the predetermined depth that means every machine has the some capacity or it can excavate up to the like 3 meters or 1.5 meters or 2 meters or so on so we may get a core of log which looks like this like it may be clay soil then second portion may be sandy soil and then it may be a sandstone which is friable sandstone it is it is not very sound enough friable sandstone then i may have limestone and then again limestone with 
which is having the appropriate amount of quartz that is called as sandy limestone. This entire arrangement of the rock which we obtain after the drilling, it will be a cylindrical mass of the rock which we make it after the drilling into the rock. This is known as bore log. Now on the basis of this core log, we can calculate the value of RQD which is very very significant for the any type of construction uh, it gives the detail about the what type of rocks is exposed in the subsurface condition whether these rocks are suitable for a particular type of construction or not this will give you the what is the joint frequency index means the what is the frequency of uh, joints as we go sub as we go deeper inside the earth one point i want to say over here that the as we go deeper inside the earth the joints and all the openings they are naturally die out now this rqd is the quality designation this rock quality designation can be calculated by the summation of all the core pieces which are greater than 10 cm length of core which is greater than 10 cm and divided by total run multiplied by 100. This value we will get in the percentage. If this value comes around 2 to 25, then I can say my rock is very poor, means that is not suitable for any, any type of construction. If this value comes between 25 to 50 percent, then my rocks are poor. If this value is between 50 to 75 percent then rock quality is fair and if it is more than 75 to 90 that is very good means this is suitable for maximum type of construction and if it is more than 90 then it is excellent here we have one core sample here we can identify about the natural joints and mechanical joints. Natural joints are those joints which is naturally present in the rock. In the case of sedimentary rocks, this may be the bedding plane or the any other divisional planes like we can see here. These are the natural joints. Apart from this natural joint, if I can see carefully over here, I can see some curved surface which is which was not actually present in the rock but due to the faulty drilling, this core break down into the two pieces. So we will not consider it as a natural joint. We will consider as a mechanical joint. Now question arises: how we can Differentiate between the natural joints and mechanical joints. If we will see here carefully, we can see a smooth surface over here because it was the inherent to the rock. But this was developed during the process of core drilling. Here also I can see, here also I can see this two, this entire core which was a sound core break down into the three pieces. But I will not consider it as a natural joint. I will consider it as a mechanical joint. I can see it can be closely fitted together. But I, I will see over here. It will be considered as natural joint. I can see the smooth surface over here. Very smooth surface. But if I will compare this surface over this small surface. This is because of the faulty drilling. We will have the sharp edges over here and to compare to here, I will get this smooth surface. 
again this is a type of mechanical joint which is because of the voluntary drilling now i have a question over here we have to solve it in this question we have to calculate rqd core loss and core recovery Now to calculate the RQD, I will take the summation of the all the joints, all the joints which is having the length more than 10 cm. So if I will see this joint number 1, it is having the length of 18 cm, I will consider it in the RQD. Second joint, it is having the length of 9 cm, I will not consider it. Another joint which is having the length of 11 cm, it will be considerable, then plus 12 cm. Now coming to this point, if I will draw it, it will be the like this, 18 cm because it is having the natural joint, it will have the smooth edge, smooth base, then 9 cm, it is 18 cm, then it is 9 cm, again natural, then 11 cm again natural then 12 again natural then 5 cm which is having a mechanical joint that means it break down because of the faulty drilling not because of the inherent defect in the rock it is 5 cm it is 7 cm. So now instead of taking it as a different part, I will consider it as a 1. So it will become 12 cm. Now again it is considerable over here. I better I can write here 5 plus 7 then 30 cm natural. It is also considerable. Then 8 cm is considerable. 8 cm, I will not consider it. Then 20 cm, having the natural base. 20 cm, I will consider this. Then 25 cm, considerable. Then 5 cm, non considerable. Then 2 cm with mechanical waste, then 15 cm with mechanical waste again, it will be like this, then 10 cm with natural. We have to account like from 2 m 15 m and 10 n we have to start counting until unless we will get the natural joint at the base now i will consider all this part as a 2 cm 15 and 10 together that means 27 cm so it is also considerable then 10 cm, then 6 cm, 6 natural but not considerable, 8 natural but not considerable, 4 natural not considerable. Now this is plus 30, plus 20, plus 25, then 27. Now uh, in question paper, it will be already given or in the question it is already given that the total run is of 2 meters means 200 centimeter. It will be divided by 200 and multiplied by 100. This will be my value of RQD. If I will calculate it, then it will be 18 plus 11 
plus 12 plus 12 plus 30 plus 20 plus 25 plus 27 divided by 200 multiplied by 100 so my value comes like 77.5 percent if I remember the previous work when this value is between 75 to 90 percent then the quality of rock is very good now other task in this is to calculate the core loss core loss is the summation of all the core pieces irrespective of their length minus total run all core pieces minus sorry it is I am uh, repeating here that is that is total run minus all core pieces irrespective of their length so all this value 18, 9, 11, 12, 5, 7, 30, 25, 5, 2 all this will be considerable and we may get the value which is which can be around uh, 30, 0 percent if we have the loose sedimentary rock then definitely the value of coal loss will be more compared to the igneous rock which are very compact and hard. Now I have to calculate core recovery. This core recovery is total length of core pieces of core pieces irrespective of their size divided by run 200 meter multiplied by 100. We will try to get this value. That is 18. It is run is it is 195. So my core loss is of 5 cm and it will be 195 divided by 200 multiplied by 100. It will be here the my core recovery is 97.5% which is a which is the indicator of a good rock type for any type of construction. Okay, thank you.